I never really want to brag about how much health my player has because then people, they get upset when they see that my player have much more health than other players. But uh, when I want to brag, I think the most simple way to show how much health you have is to simply have a health bar. So that's what we will implement in this episode. Previously, we implemented spells to strike down our enemies. And uh, after this episode, you will definitely know how to display a health bar over your player. Let's code. But first, I want to make a picture of how we want the health bar to work. We want the bar to be above the player and display how many health points are left. The health bar must also follow the player's movements, otherwise it would be a bad health bar, very bad health bar. And um, the last requirement is that the health bar should display a loss of one unit of health when an enemy reaches the player. Uh, these three requirements are quite straightforward, but since you are not a code genius like myself, I will show you all steps necessary to make the best bar seen by mankind. We can start by navigating to the player class, since we want the health bar to be updated and rendered together with the player. To achieve this, we can override the super classes draw method by writing public void draw and pass a canvas object to the method's head. Since we still want to draw the player, we need to call the draw method of the extended circle class, which can be done by calling super.draw and pass the canvas as input. And remember, Super refers to the instance of the parent class, which for the player is the circle class. Then we want to figure out a way of drawing a health bar. So what would be the simplest way to do this? Well, if we had an object called health bar, which has a draw method, then we could simply write health bar dot draw and pass the canvas as argument. Then we work our way backwards by hitting alt plus return and select create field health bar in player. And wouldn't it be very nice if the health bar was of type health bar? The answer is yes, 100% yes, it would be almost too nice actually. But just as it's not enough to declare to your mom that you will clean your room and then you never do it, it's also not okay to declare a variable without initializing it. So follow along with me to the player's constructor body where we will initialize this dot health bar to a new health bar. Then click Alt plus return and select create class health bar. And that's it. You, you are actually done now. So uh, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and we will see each other in the next tutorial. It was a joke. Now we can create a constructor for the health bar by writing public health bar. And then we can't forget the most important part. We need to create a doc string where we describe the class for our big developer community. Remember to always be developer friendly when you write code. We are always developer friendly here in this channel. We write that health bar displays the player's health to the screen. People will thank us in generation for our kindness. Moving on, we need to start thinking of how we can implement the drawing part of the health bar. And the simplest thing to start with is to write the draw method. So we can type public void draw and add a canvas as argument to the method's head. Then we let our creativity sparkle. We need to draw a bar and we need to draw health. Hmm, this is not very creative yet, but it's, it's a good start. I, I think we're going there. Um, I guess the health in the bar is surrounded by what could be called a border. So let's divide the drawing into two steps. First, we draw a border or background, depending on how you want to think about it. And on top of this background border, we draw the health meter. And to make a background with uh, a rectangular shape, you can use the canvas object and call a method called draw rect, which takes five input arguments. The first argument will be the left position in X of the border, then comes the top Y position, the right X position, and the bottom Y position. And we also pass a variable for the paint we want to have. All these variables are prefixed with the word border, and we can use the same naming pattern for the arguments in the health meet drawing. So now we start to understand what values we must calculate in order for drawing the health bar. And since the health bar will move together with the player, we need the player's position as reference for calculating all positional variables for the health bar drawing. So we can write float x equals player dot get position x. We then create a field player in health bar and also make sure to initialize this dot player to player. 
So we can also add the player argument to the constructor's head. We still get an error in the get position statement, and that's because the method returns a value of type double, and we want a value of type float. We can then cast the value to a float, and everything will be fine. The reason we want to store the value as a float is that the draw rect method has declared all of its positional arguments as floats. By also declaring the x position as a float, it will avoid future type casting when calculating the border and health bar variables. So this is just a nice way to save us some future trouble. Next, we copy and paste the x position and change the names from x to y. The next variable we need to have is a float describing how many pixels above the player the health bar will be. We will take an educated guess and initialize it to 30 pixels. The last piece of information we need is regarding the health meter. We need to know how many percentage of the total health we should draw. So we write float health points percentage equals player dot get health points and divide it by player dot max health points. We don't have these methods and variables yet, so we can click Alt plus return and select create constant field max health points and select player as target class. Let's decide on counting health points as integers and we can choose the maximum number of health points to be 10. Then we head back to the health bar and select create method get health points in class player. We change the return type to int and return the field health points. This field does not yet exist, so we type alt plus return and select create field health points in player. And uh, we can then go to the player's constructor body and type this dot health points equals max health points. And while we're here, we can also add a player to the health bars constructor by passing this as argument. Now, when we look at the health point percentage statement, we see that we must cast the statement to a float, so we do that. Then we start deriving the border's positional variables. We write border left equals x minus the total width of the health bar, and we divide it by 2 to center the bar around the player. The field width doesn't exist yet, so we create a field for it, and at the same time, we create a field for the height of the health bar and for the margin between the outside of the border and the health. Then we can initialize the width to about 100 pixels and the height to 20. The margin can be set to maybe 2 pixels. We then continue with calculating the border variables. We write border right equals x plus the width divided by 2. If you look at the symmetry of the border left and right, you will see that the variable x will be the middle of the border and that the total length of the border is equal to the width. Next, we set the border bottom equal to y minus the distance to the player. And remember, the y coordinates on a screen is zero at the top of the screen and increases as we go down to the bottom of the screen. So when we subtract the distance to the player from y, we are actually moving up from the player. Finally, we set the border top equal to border bottom and subtract the height. Now, when the geometry of the border is known, we need to create a paint object for the border. We initialize this dot border to a new paint object, then we create an int and name it border color and select a color by calling context compat dot get color and supply the context as well as r dot color dot health bar color. We don't have the context in this class yet, so we add it to the constructor's head by typing context context. To create the health bar color, we head over to resources.values.color. We copy and paste a color and then select a boring gray color for the border. On the way back to the health bar, we make a stop in the player class and pass the context to the health bar's constructor. Now we can actually test if our border is getting drawn to the screen. We will just comment out the draw health statement and then we hit run. What the f is this? No border! Oh sh! I forgot to paint the border color. Boom! Look at that border! Eyes up please, don't look at my border in that way. Now we create floats for health left, top, right and bottom. We add health width and height as intermediate variables and calculate the health width as the health bar width minus 2 times the margin 
and the health height as the health bar height minus two times the margin. Then the health left is set equal to border left plus the margin. The health right is a bit more tricky. We want to calculate it by starting from the health left and then add the health width times health points percentage. So if we think about the health width as the total health we can have, the health point percentage is scaling the health width down to proportionally represent how much health we have left. Then we can calculate the health bottom by starting from the border bottom and subtracting the margin. And the final variable is the health top, which we calculate by taking the health bottom and subtracting the health height. The last thing needed is a health paint object. So we can add a health paint field and copy and paste the block of code for creating the border paint object. And then we replace the word border by health. Then we go back to the colors.xml file and create a new color for the health and select a very healthy green color for it. Then we go back to the health bar class and replace the remaining variable names from border to health. Now we can run the game again and look at that fancy health bar. But we have a big problem. We don't lose any health when we're getting hit by an enemy. We solve this very easily by changing some things in the game object class. Go down to the update method and look inside the while loop where we iterate through the enemy list and check for collision between each enemy and the player. When an enemy and the player is colliding, we want to both remove the enemy and also set the health point of the player to the previous points minus one. We already have a get method, but we need to create a set method for the health points. Hit Alt plus return and select create method set health points and choose the player as target class. Then we change the argument name to health points and type this dot health points equals health points. We try to run the game again and a miracle has truly happened. The health bar is decreasing each time we get hit by the enemy. But after getting zero health, we see a strange behavior. The health in the health bar starts to extend to the left of the health bar. And this is because the player starts getting negative health points. Since you cannot be more dead than dead, we need to prohibit the player from getting negative health. And we can do this by restricting the set health points method by writing a simple if statement. We write if health points is greater than or equal to zero, which will ensure that we are only allowed to change the health points field to positive values. Now we're truly done. And if we run the game again, you can confirm that we're no longer getting any negative health point values. That's it for this time. In the next episode, we will take a sad look at what happens when all your health is down to zero and it's time to pass to the other side. I'm obviously talking about how to stop the game and print game over to the screen when the player is dead. Thank you so much for watching and please leave suggestions in the comment section on what features you would like me to introduce in the coming episodes. And if you want, you can give me a small like or subscribe.